Whiskey Jason here, whiskey from the viewpoint of an American in Germany tasting rare and exotic whiskeys. Today I'm in Switzerland. Mm. So this is Seven Seals and it's a single malt and here I have the portwood finish and here I have the whiskey of the day, the sherry wood finish. Now these are both 46%. I also have, and the videos will be coming with these as well, um, here we have the cast proof, we have the peated um, single malt double wood finish, and here I have the port wood. So about the same price, 0 0.5 for cast strength, 0 0.7 here for the normal 46%. Um, so what do I have here? I have a Dr. Dolph, an interesting name, D-O-L-F, um, Dolph uh, Stockhausen. He actually is one of the owners of High Spirits Holding AG, which just means incorporated. So let's get rid of this for a moment as well. And he is also therefore partial owner of Lagatun Distillery in Switzerland. I have tried a few of their products. So this is the Sherry Wood Finished, um, 0 0.7 liters, 46%. 62 euros and 99 cents is the going price here in Germany. Whiskey base number one. 29106. Now I'm going to read, I've read everything on the front label, there's nothing else here, nothing, nothing else here to read. On the back label it says sevensealswhiskey.com, refined and bottled in Switzerland. Now that word really, really bothers me, refined. It does not say distilled, and according to my thing, my understanding of the world is if it doesn't say distilled, it isn't distilled in the place. They said they did buy this spirit. Some people think because there's an automatic connection between the high spirit holding that it is from Lagatun, the distillery, but I have a little bit of a doubt that it actually came from the Lagatun. I think it may have came from someplace in Germany. Who knows? Who knows? All right, so it says in German, Brand aus gemälzte Gerste, which translated down below, distilled from malted barley, 46%. It's the imported by the HSD, and that is the Lagatun Distillery AG. So this is a single malt whiskey. Single means one distillery. So if they do import something from someplace else, all this whiskey has to come from some other place. If it came from partially this one distillery and partially that one distillery, it would not be single malt according to European definitions. All right, so if it is from you, write down, please, distilled. And don't write down refined. Why did they even write down the word refined? Well, because Dr. Dolph um, Stockhausen has developed a, um, a technique to um, rapid age whiskey. Oh, we've had that before, haven't we? Cleveland whiskey. I think it was called Terra Pure um, and so on. So he talks about the, um, he, he says time doesn't matter, taste does. Good, I don't disagree there. And he talked about the shortage of U.S. casks being sent to Scotland, the bourbon casks. And at the very beginning, he mentioned that actually bourbon casks, maybe he used the whiskey, not the word bourbon, but um, bourbon casks make up 85, if not 90 percent of all casks used in the United States, um, will soon be able, to use, be able to use twice. No one is discussing that at all. Dr. Dolph um, Stockhausen. Um, that is not in the regulations, and there will always be bourbon, one cask, that's it, and we send them over to Europe. And we have an expansion, almost bigger, or even bigger. The, the, the whiskey industry has expanded faster in the U.S. than it has in Scotland. Scotland's been vacuum, been amazing, but actually U.S. has even been more, fa uh, even faster than that, so don't worry about cask. There is no such thing as a bourbon cask shortage at least not over here in Europe. Yes, they cost maybe 10, 20, 30 percent more than they did five or ten years ago, but hey, inflation and so on. All right, so he talks about the different types of um, maturation. He talks about the addition, so you want to add a vanillin, and you want to add wood sugars, and you want to subtract things as well over age. So what he does is instead of actually putting a focus on the char of a bourbon cask, he puts a uh, focus on a longer, lower temperatured thermal um, application for the casks. He toasted them, right? So uh, what do you turn that wood sugars into caramel with toasting? If you ever had a Michter's toasted barrel instead of the normal Michter's, you will 
feel, taste, and experience a difference. So toasting is a beautiful, beautiful thing. Now I'm learning more and more about wood. We have cellulose, we have hemicellulose, and we have lignines in our wood, and we can actually have something called gua, uh, gua gacol. That is a substance what we have, for example, when we have PT woody smoke. Um, by the way, the threshold was at 3 ppb, so not parts per million, but parts per billion. <laughs> so if it's even 3 uh, Gua Gokal, uh, you can, some people can actually identify it already at that mount, which I thought was amazing. All right, so you can take that Gua Gokal and you can actually add thermal energy to it and you can turn it, apparently, into a vanillin. And that's something that we might want. All right, so 62 euros 90. I thought about this for a second. What whiskey do I have? And they say, hey, this whiskey should taste somewhere like a 15 to 18 year old whiskey. I was like, okay, what sherry whiskey do I have that costs about 62 euros and is 15 years old? Well, that was kind of easy. My, one of my favorites. Every single time at the moment, people are asking me, Jason, we can't buy Glendronach anymore. That was my first thought because I still have some non chilled bottles here. Um, but um, what do we buy instead? You buy Glenarachy, all right? That stuff is amazing, and the 15-year-old is very, very nice. It actually won my mega 15-year-old challenge where we took 18 different bottles, 15-year-old bottles from Scotland, compared them to each other blind, and the winner was, ta-da, Glenarachy 15. Now, the first thing I have to mention is the color. Yeah, all right, good. You see here on the right-hand side, you see on the left-hand side, 15 years old. So this is three years old plus a rapid aging time. I don't know if it's two months or two years. They don't tell me. Um, there's a lot of information that is not available and that is awaiting the patenting this um, rapid aging technique. It might actually be here in the summer of 2021 patented. And then the, what they'll do is there'll be also a secret technology um, or, and they would like to actually go to Scotland and help the people in Scotland use this technology to rapid age their whiskeys. Mm, I'm not sure if I like that or not. All right, good. So now on the nose, it's weird. <laughs> I get some dark chocolate, but I also get some bell pepper. And I was like, what's my bell pepper doing with my chocolate? And then on top of that, I get a green metallic type of whiskey note. And then on top of that, I get a tiny little bit of the berries of the sherry. So um, I do not know what the finish, how long this was. I'm not even sure how they did the finish, to be honest. Did they put chips in it? I'm not aware that that's forbidden in the European Union in single malt. I do know that Scotland has certain regulations that forbid it there, but... Now, did they use the word, oh, they have, a, they have an equation. They have F for finishing, divided by E for ennoblement, mm -hmm. times um, celerity, which means speed, uh, plus quality equals seven seals. So we divide the finish by the ennoblement, all right? So how, how, is, how noble are the cask, I guess? We times it by the speed and we add the quality. I don't know why we add quality. I would actually add the speed and times the quality. But hey, I guess I don't understand that equation. All right. So, um, and there's a greenness to this. This is a really type of young whiskey, which is not perfect in my opinion. Especially when I go over to the Glen Oh, oh, mm. Woodiness, sweetness, brown sugars, um, aromas of, um, of dark, rich plums, and so on. Wonderful, wonderful whiskey. Over here, eh, not sure. A little bit of a green wood. Got that bell peppers. Got that interesting chocolate in there. I guess there's some European oak in here. They did mention something that they like to get the tannins out of the European oak especially in the port and cherry bot barrels by adding water. So they flush out the barrels and they can actually take out some of that tannins that way. Um, I think the wine industry uses that as well. Um, so, cheers. There is some heat. 
but there's some bitterness there's some weirdness, it's not even funkiness, it's weirdness going on. And then it goes back nice to a actually an interesting moment. Not bad, not bad, ew, what's going on? Okay. All right, and that's what this whiskey does. And uh, really, to be honest, uh, the palate is, at the beginning, okay. Then that weirdness really happens, it's a very confusing moment for me. I try to describe it as um, when I drink this whiskey, the Glen Arachi, it's as if an orchestra started playing a song. You have maybe a, a 30 piece orchestra, all the different instruments at the same time creating a, a harmony. You have here basically at the beginning the maybe five piece orchestra playing uh, the same tune and in the middle they just diverge, they go in different directions. One's playing classic, the other one goes into fusion or jazz or something and at the end they land up on one note and it's okay. Um, there's something f weird going on here in the middle. Alright, so I'm going to add just a tiny little bit of water. I give this whiskey a C- in my report, in my, sorry, my report, my German whiskey review. Ooh, water didn't really do it anything, uh, didn't in, in, in improve it in any way, in my opinion. Mm. Michael, not Michael, um, what is the guy's name here? The Whiskey Bible Guy. Uh, Jim Murray. He gave this, uh, not this, but some whiskey from uh, Seven Seals in 95, which is amazing. Which shows that my um, palate is not the same as his palate. Is this a terrible whiskey? No. I'm actually going to revise my opinion with water here. It's actually going to go to a C to a C minus. Um, that weirdness kind of dissipates a little bit by the second um, try. Maybe I just get used to it. There are moments in here that are interesting, especially that chocolate moment. There's a lot of chocolate covered peppers. If you want that, if you like that, that's very, very nice. There's a little bit of European oak in here. The sherry moment is there, but not in your face. And so it's an okay whiskey. Um, question of the day, what do you think about um, rapid aging? And what other places do you know that rapid age? Terra Pure, um, Cleveland, uh, Seven Seals, what other processes or what other companies you know of? It was back there in um, California that was here, the... There was a Puma, and there was the, um, oh, that's so good. The guy who did it with the swimming pool for cooling. Hmm. Hmm. So let's see if I can find that name real quick. Well, All right, there was a guy out in California who did also some rapid aging stuff. That was very, very weird um, and very, very interesting. Um, the Glen, Glen Arachi 15 is the new Glen Dronach 15 for me. At least I can say that. I really like everything that's coming out from Glen Arachi at the moment. And the core range, I'm not sure about the 18 and the 21 and so on. But the 10-year-old cast strength, the 12-year-old, the 15-year-old, magnifica. All right, very, very good. This... Yeah, value for money, it's a D. I'm not willing to pay 62 euros when I can get this for 8 euros cheaper over here. Um, limited distribution, I do know that we have this in um, Germany. I do know they have it in Switzerland. I'm not sure about the UK, Australia, US, or any other places about their plans. Whiskey Jason here. Whiskey from the viewpoint of an American tasting rare and exotic whiskeys. Today, Seven Seals, their sherry cask finished. Um, rapid aged whiskey. Actually more of a C than a C to a C minus um, rather than a D plus. Thank you very much for watching. Like, subscribe, tell others, and thank you very much for all your comments. See you soon. Whiskey Jason. Bye-bye.